Greetings. Welcome to episode number two of trying to make the 4335 work. Now, if you're new to the series, the team on the screen is the team that we are using on my second account to do this. So it's, you know, the team's a little bit worse and I feel like it makes it better uh, for the overall balance. Now, getting into the nitty gritty, obviously, if you're new to the series, how do we format this? We played seven games in episode one with no instructions and no custom into tactics. We track stats that we're gonna get into again later today in the episode. And based on those stats in this episode, we played seven more games with those tactics and instructions and obviously all that stuff to see if statistically speaking, things improved. That's the goal, to make a tactic that we can safely say has improved our statistics specifically in terms of goals scored goals conceded shots taken and overall goal contributions so that everyone on the field offensively is super involved now obviously what did we change um you know we did leave the fullbacks on balance even though we did have issues with defense last week i just feel like it felt a bit premature to give up on that but we did put the cdm on stay back while attacking we left the left center mid untouched the right center mid we did put on get forward even though we said we weren't going to touch him because last episode he was our best goal scorer and goal contributor alongside our center forward center forward untouched right winger untouched and then obviously the most important man in the episode the left winger i say that because last you know episode he did absolutely nothing for us and we put him on cut back or, or cut inside apologies uh, in hopes of maybe getting more out of him because he was actually so bad that as you know he contributed less than the cdm the left center mid and barely contributed more than a fullback now let's get into the nitty gritty of everything that we tracked in terms of actually results uh, which is one of the least important things for me because like i said last episode if i can successfully take way more shots and concede less and i'm quite happy with it right because my issue with the four through three is always that just not enough chance creation the wingers get isolated offensive ai is bleh so if i can make a tactic that maximizes statistically the shots taken that's the most important thing that being said out of our seven games today we won six and we drew one which is a lot better uh, compared to last time where we i believe won four drew two lost one should have also been seven wins zero losses but again not super important because our draw was a 2-2 draw where we were two goals up and we ended up choking the goal that made it 2-1 really kind of killed my vibe but it is what it is in that game we still had a good shots taken to conceded ratio i believe we took nine shots that game and conceded two and obviously uh, from those two shots conceded of course we conceded two goals getting into the goals we scored 28 goals this episode which is um four goals per game compared to last episode where we scored 25 goals scored and 3.5 per game that's only an increase of three total goals 0.5 more per game yeah a little bit better not as much as we would like but remember guys we also had two rage quits today as we did uh last time so it could have been even higher actually i think last time i only had one rage quit no we did have two rage quits so in both cases it could have been a little bit more than 28 maybe we shouldn't count uh, the rage quits in the stats. I don't know. Let me guys, let me know in the comments. Maybe the stats should only be counted for the full 90 minutes, uh, right? Because you could have a three nil rage quit with three shots, but over 90 minutes that could have had it could have been a 10 shot game, right? And as you know, I like to track my shots taken because the more shots taken, the happier I am. Now, in terms of uh, goals conceded, we conceded eight goals, which is 1.1 per game, a lot better than the last time where we conceded 14. That was two goals per game. That was way too much. Obviously. Uh, credit where credit is due to Allen staying back while attacking for once, uh, but maybe we just played better today. Who knows? Hard to say. In terms of opponent formation, I'm not going to go over that today because I didn't really feel like anything really caused me issues. Skill rating opponents overall, not much to say, although I will say that last time I had a lot more opponents in the 1900s. This time I had a lot more opponents in the 2000s, so maybe I was playing better players. Who knows? Definitely some teams were quite uh, surprising. Obviously, this means that my skill rating by the end was 2235 which we means we actually got a lot higher up uh, than usuals. But really, the most important things, shots taken. We took 60 shots this episode, which is 8.5 per game, compared to 50 shots last episode, which was 7.1 per game. So 10 more shots and 1.4 per game more than last time. Happy days, obviously. Things were going well. You know, when, you know how they say it, right? If all ships rise, we all contribute more. 
and uh, there's a bird chirping right now that's killing me, but we're going to keep going with the episode. Uh, in terms of shots conceded, 24 shots conceded, which is 3.4 per game for this episode. Uh, last episode, we had 28 shots conceded, so we conceded 4 less, and per game, 0.6 less per game. Ah, not bad. Uh, was hoping for more, but really our main focus right now is offensively. Now getting into the goal contributions, which uh, is one of my favorite things to look at because based on who is obviously more or less involved, we can change tactics. Now, center forward, this episode had 18 goal contributions, which is uh, one more than last time, and he was once again in first place. We're fine with that. We didn't really want much more of an increase with him. We kind of wanted to keep him where he was at, which is what we had, uh, but also seeing other positions rise. Now, the left winger last episode only had two goal contributions. This time he had five. So cutting inside gave him three more goal contributions. And overall, I did feel like he was more involved, missed a lot of chances with him. So the cutting inside was pretty good. The question now is, do we match the left winger and right winger? Because this episode, as you know, the only one we touched was the left winger. Is it better in a 4-3-3 to have the wingers on different instructions? Does that lead to a better balance? Who knows? But I think next time I want to try and have them both on cutting inside and then both on free roam and the one after that. See how that affects it. See if free roam is better than cutting inside and all that good stuff. Because uh, this episode, the right center mid had, um, or sorry, the right winger had five goal contributions, which is one less than the six he had last time, which is not a problem. One less in one episode is not a big deal, so long as the left winger gets more involved. Now, the left center mid last time had three goal contributions. This time, he had five. So, two more for him uh, as well. He was untouched, and I think he will remain untouched. Now, the right center mid last episode, like I said, he was a top, top scorer with a center forward, and he was on 17 goal contributions. This time around, even though we scored more goals overall, he had six less goal contributions after we put get forward on him. Maybe the get forward is a bit too extreme. Maybe the balance was better with him on uh, just being balanced uh, offensive support and not you know, getting forward. So perhaps next episode, we try and put him back on balance and see if that was the reason he contributed less, or maybe he contributed less because the balance of the team and everything led to the left winger and left center made and right winger also just contributing more and spreading the goods a little more. But I think uh, perhaps getting forward might be asking for too much, hard to say. Uh, in terms of the CDM, he contributed three goal contributions, which is only one less than four last time. So it's nice to see more defensive solidity while he maintains his uh, goal contributions. I'll allow it. And then in terms of the fullbacks, last episode, we only had one goal contribution from the left back this time too. So one more. And then the right back had three goal contributions this match uh, or this episode, which is a whopping three more than last time because last time he had zero. So the balance fullbacks this time giving or paying out more dividends uh, in terms of, you know, contributions. Now, in terms of next episode, based on everything that happened today, I think I'm going to keep the fullbacks as is. I think I'm going to keep the CDM as is for now, even though in the future I will try with cover center and I will try man mark and cut passing lanes and see what happens with that. Uh, but for now, we're good. I think I'm going to put the right center mid on balance, but I'm going to have to think about it. Let me know. Uh, and then left center mid maybe on balance. I think in the future, we could test out get forward right center mid, stay back on De Young and see how that goes out. But I think balance might just be the play here for the center mids. Uh, in terms of the center forward, still not going to touch him. Uh, in terms of the right winger and left winger, like I said, maybe we match. Uh, we put them both on cutting inside because uh, I still think I want more from them uh, and cutting inside might not be the best. Perhaps uh, a little bit of a come short on support runs could be uh, useful or maybe uh, free roam and chance creation for both. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, what I should be getting up to. This was today's episode and hopefully soon we can start tinkering with mentalities as soon as we have all the player instructions down. That's what I'm going to move on to in, in the focus of mentalities. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.